Welcome back to another episode of Sip the Tether Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans. Today, we're going to be speaking on what do we need to do at O-line? Do we really have to draft an O-line guy at 27 or 31, or even trade up to get one of the high-quality guys? But first of all, let's see what we have on the roster at O-line and see if that's sufficient enough to, to move forward and stick with the original plan. And obviously, all of this is coming about with the trade of Orlando Brown Jr., um, potentially signing Alejandro Villanueva uh, in free agency on May 3rd, but that's not guaranteed in stone right now. But let's look at the guys that we have on the team and see if that would be sufficient to get us through the season. First off, I'm going to look at uh, TCC, Tristan Colon Castillo. TCC, he started two games, I think week 12, when all the COVID issues with the Ravens came down against the Steelers. And then the last week, of the, the last week, week 17, I was really impressed with a guy that pretty much was on the practice squad the entire year. So with him playing center for those two games and really having two good games, and we almost snuck that win out, you know, versus the Steelers in week 12 when he started, or week 13, whatever week it was. I was impressed with um, his ability to to handle the point. Uh, snaps were, um, what's the word I'm looking for, sufficient. I didn't, there were no bad snaps. I didn't see snaps where Lamar had to reach right or left or high or low. So his snaps were um, consistent. Uh, holding the point on our power plays and our counter plays, he looked okay at it. Not the greatest, but, you know. He was a rookie, and um, I was really impressed with him, so I think his name will be in there at that battle for the center position. Moving on to Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler is a guy we got from the Giants. Uh, Pretty much, you know, barring something goes wrong, he's going to be the starting right guard for the Ravens, unless somebody just comes out and just beats him out for it. But I think he's going to be the starting right guard for the Ravens, you know, come the fall. Um, Tremendous career so far with the Giants Um, had an okay last year but the year before he had a great year but that was with Saquon running behind him also so Saquon kind of made those guys look um, not say better than they were but with him getting all the yards he got after contact it kind of makes your O-line look better because they have all those rushing yards next on my list Bradley Bozeman Bozeman started that left guard for us for the past two years. And even though he played some center in college, so there could, you know, be some competition with the center position with Bradley Bozeman's name in it. But with that being said, I love Bradley's ability to pull. I'm going to take you back two years when Yonder was still here. So the O-line was Stanley, Bozeman, um, Skura, and um, Yonder, Orlando Brown. Most of all our power plays or counter plays that involved pulling went right. And Bozeman was that guy. Because Yonder would cave stuff down. Bozeman would come off of Yonder or off of OBJ and just clean house. Clean house. He's a great pulling guard. I know that term don't really exist in the NFL right now like a specific pulling guard. But we ran so much stuff to the right that it almost looked like Bozeman was a pulling guard. But with that being said, he still his name is still in the hat. To play center. Play center. And then again, barring something happens, he could play right guard. But I think Zeitler has that job. But again, that's uh, Bradley Bozeman. Again, his name is in there for left guard and center. So you got competition at both positions. But I think he'll be at one of the two. All right, moving on. Pat McCarr. McCarr, uh plays center when, um, when Skura, you know, had his issues, whatever. And he, you know did his thing and then he ended up having issues toward the end so now i don't know where he fits in this in this this cluster right now of offensive linemen but again he's an option at center there's going to be competition at center with uh the name so far tristan colon castillo bozeman mccari and those snaps really throw a damper on my mm, let me let me settle down those snaps really throw a damper on, I think, his chances of winning that job. Because 
the, the Ravens fans, the last thought of Lamar last year is a snap going over his head, him going to get it and getting a concussion. And I know, I know, moving on, <laughs> moving on. Next, Tyree Phillips. Now, Tyree, Tyree is interesting because Tyree played guard and tackle last year. Uh, he was in a, a merry-go-round rotation with, with Fluker at, at right tackle when when uh, after Stanley got hurt. Uh, played some, some guard at one point b- before Stanley got hurt. He just bounced around the old line, played every position but left tackle and left guard and center. So he played right tackle, right guard, and then he, you know, bounced around back and forth. Now, was he the greatest? No. He was, he was a rookie, uh, not strong enough in some areas, not understanding leverage in other areas, but still, the versatility. He wasn't, he wasn't horrible. He got, he got beat on some pass rushes, and, and just overall, our offensive line is not the greatest at pass rushing. I'm sorry, pass blocking. Stanley is by far our best pass blocker, and we'll talk about him when, I, when we get to him. All right, but I think Phillips could fit in there somewhere as a, if not a starter, a guy that can bounce in if somebody tends to get hurt or is not having a, a good game. Um, Next, Ben Powers. Ben Powers is the guy I thought uh, would have won that right guard job last year. But, um, you know, I think we started out with Phillips at right guard maybe. Phillips or Fluker, one of them at right guard. But anyway. But I thought Powers was the guy that would win that job because flashback two years ago, the one game he played versus the Steelers played outstanding. Even though that was a game where we didn't play everybody, the Steelers still had a chance to to get in the playoffs, I think. And, um, you know, Ben played good, um, looked good, and, you know, in the, the snaps that he had, looked good in the snaps he had last year. But as far as him just taking that job and locking it down, that hasn't happened. And now with the addition of, of Zeitler, that's really in the mix. So I don't really know where Ben Powers fits in this this cluster of O line. All right, moving on to uh, Matt Skura. Huh. Mm. Now I know if you've been following the channel, I put a video out probably two years ago, and the, the title of that video was Matt Skura is not the problem. At the time, he was not the problem. This time, with the snaps from him and Makari, that's a problem. That's a problem. We're the type of team that we cannot get behind the sticks. And snapping the ball low, high, over the quarterback's head, left, right, is an issue. That has to be cleaned up. Like, it, it, it you just can't do it. You can't do it because we, we're we're a, a stay in front of the chains, eat time, run the ball. We're that type of offense. You can't have negative plays. You can't just can't have them. And snapping the ball, no, I don't care how well he understands leverage, how well he blocks, how well he can pin and pull. I don't. None of that matters if you can't get a consistent snap back there, ninety nine out of ninety nine times. Okay, moving on. Ben Bredesen. Ben Bredesen was a guy that was picked up recently, and he's just, it's a numbers game, and he's at the low end of that number. Uh, you would have thought he would have played over Tyree, with Tyree being a rookie and Ben having a year on. No, I think they came in together. Let me, I think they came in together. I don't have the thing right in front of me. But Ben and Tyree may have came in. I think Ben and Tyree came in together. So they were both rookies. So Ben, ben, ben was a rookie also. I guess Tyree just ended up being a better O-lineman than what Ben was because Tyree ended up getting more, a lot more action than Ben did. And if I'm wrong about them coming in together, let me know down in the comment section. And lastly, Ronnie Stanley. Talk about Ronnie for a quick second. Ronnie uh, is the third highest paid lineman in the NFL behind uh, Trent and uh, Tunsil. So, when he's healthy, He's top tier left tackle guy. I pray, I pray, I pray that he comes back healthy because he was solidified at left side and then you just you only have four positions to work with. Uh not to work with, to worry about. So if he comes back, he is top echelon, top tier 
offensive line, you know, material or player or however you want to say it. But with with if he's not healthy, then this whole thing is a whole big cluster, and we're gonna have tribes again. Like, and and every time I I think about it, I think about the, um, when the Joker, you know, broke that pool stick and told um that guy's man, uh, you know, we got one opening left on our team, and we be having tribes. Because if if he's not healthy, we basically having tribes, and it's gonna be rough, rough, rough. Keep in mind. We don't have very many good pass blockers on the team. Our guys are run blockers. They're maulers. They're um, uh, block down, kick out guys, pull and wrap guys. They're not, they can pass block. They're not the greatest just, if we sit back and throw 50 times, Lamar's going to be running a lot because we we just not, we don't have great pass blockers. Sorry. Sorry. But, you got um, Alejandro Villanueva as like a, 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 in case of glass break, you got a pick at 27, you got a pick at 31. Do you use one of those picks for a tackle? Because at 27, the elite tackle guys won't be there. Hopefully, Tevin, um, I think it's Jenkins from Oklahoma State, maybe he'll be there. But those elite guys won't be there. So do you you reach for a, a tackle at twenty seven or for a guy that's not worth that twenty seven pick because you don't have a second rounder? So you, we're in a quandary where do we take those picks and trade up? Do we trade back to try to get more picks so we can maybe grab a second tier tackle in the second round? Yeah, I wouldn't want to be Eric DeCosta right now, but that's why he get paid the big bucks, and um this is my. Uh, synopsis of what the O-line situation is in Baltimore right now. Um, like, comment, subscribe, please. Please, please, please. Likes are free. Uh, if you like what you heard, if you follow the little graphics along with it, uh, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so you'll know when I drop these videos. And um, It's draft week. I'll be live for the first round um, Thursday. Uh, second, uh, second round, I will be with another YouTuber, and I'll let you know who that guy is at when that time shows up, if it, if it goes through. And uh, third, the Saturday, I'll just be chilling and watching, just chilling and watching at the crib. You no, know, no live. I'll be tweeting and whatnot. But again, I appreciate you guys for coming through and uh, taking uh, what about 15 minutes of your time to discuss the O line situation. If you uh, have any comments about what I said, or you like or dislike, or want to chat about it more, hit me on Twitter or just drop down in the comment section and put that comment down there. Again, it's Coach Evans. Appreciate you guys. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me, and I'm out. With the, with the